I'm told that we now have our connection with Mary Ellen Kloss, the uh, Bureau Chief for the Miami Herald in Tallahassee. Mary Ellen, nice talking to you. Hi, good a to little, be here. A little while ago, Jim DeFitti was showing the map of uh, Florida with the election results, and it's similar to what you would see in Texas, right? Where you would mm -hmm. see it's all red with uh, some spots of blue, uh, something that we're not used to seeing. And he said that now Florida is a solidly red state. But I would ask the question, Florida has been a red state for quite a while, haven't we? Uh, Republican governors, Republican legislature, both houses, two Republican senators. What changes in your view after this election, Mary Ellen? Well, um, I think you're absolutely right. Practically, the state has performed as a very red state for a long time. The distinction has been that Florida voters have registered in the past um, as a purple state, where there, we've been all, we've been one third Republican, one third Democrat, and one third no party affiliate. Now we have uh, Republicans who have registered in greater numbers than Democrats. And we here's why I think we might still be able to be a swing state. There are more than, there are millions of Floridians who remain as no party affiliated. Neither party's uh, identity is something that appeals to either of them. So the value of really good, strong campaigns is to win those people over. And, and I think that um, anyone who is in office has to remember that. And so while I think Republicans will rightfully suggest that this was an enormous victory for them, um, I think they have to remember that they, that the next election cycle, things could change again. And, um, and that's what makes this dynamic, I think. I think what highlights what you just mentioned as far as potentially still being a swing state, maybe if we break it down county by county, because you look at the Senate race between Marco Rubio and Val Demings, and Demings won West Palm Beach, but if you're Palm Beach County, but if you look at the governor's race, DeSantis won Palm Beach County. It was a very close race there, but it's showing you that people aren't just going down their ballot and ticking off all Republicans or all Democrats. They're, they're going with a plan in mind. Maybe they're not even voting for certain offices. They don't feel like either candidate is the best option, but it's not as simple as just just, you know, you're registered Republican, you vote this way, you're registered Democrat, you vote that way. So looking ahead into the future of elections here, maybe even the presidential race, when we're talking about potentially having Governor Ron DeSantis run for president, are we thinking that Florida will stay with this red trend or could we see a shift when you see that uh, this party remains in power here in the state? Well, I do think that um, when it comes to Ron DeSantis, I think that this is quite a statement that the public supports him. His margin is enormous. Um, the, the, the fact that he um, was able to win in every pocket of the state is significant. And so if Ron DeSantis is on the ballot in 2024, I think that um, it, it would be a very strong signal that the state might go red again. But, but everything is early, and I do have to say that um, the, that is the question we're all asking is when does Ron DeSantis announce for president, not if. Okay, Mary Ellen, we still have not heard from Governor DeSantis tonight, and there's a lot of speculation, of course, that he may launch a presidential campaign. We've reported that he has a lot of money to do so, uh, second only to uh, Donald Trump. What will you be looking for tonight to hear from Ron DeSantis? Do you think that he will bring up any national aspirations? Well, you know, I think as Jim mentioned earlier, um, there, Jim DeFitti mentioned, you know, the national audience will be watching. So this is an opportunity. But I'll be honest, I think the natural, national audience has been watching for a long time. And um, I am wondering if uh, Ron DeSantis might start looking inward a little bit. Florida has some really heavy duty issues that have to be addressed. The insurance market, we've talked about the crisis in real estate and cost of uh, housing. Um, you know, there are, there are things at home that need to be addressed. And um, one of the things that a, a prospective national candidate can't have is a crisis at home. So uh, it may be that he suggests that he needs to start focused on, on gov governing. But I will be also listening for some of those issues that he um, has used effectively to try and win over many of the, 
the Trump base. Um, and, and, you know, I think one of the hardest things he's going to have ahead of him is making sure he doesn't antagonize that base who still support Donald Trump and yet wins them over if he wants to run for president. Um, so he's he's got a pretty um, difficult agenda in many ways, uh, navigating all the all these forces that are ahead, and and so it's going to be a really interesting time, I think, just to watch all of this at play. Mary Ellen, while all the dust settles and the Democratic Party of Florida looks back on this election and sort of does a postmortem on on what went wrong here, what are some of the things they're going to be looking at? Do they simply not motivate people enough to head out to the polls, whether it be through early voting, absentee voting, or actual voting on election day? Where where was the misstep for the Democratic Party in Florida here? Well, I think there are there will be um, a giant postmortem, and if if there isn't, you can just pretty much uh, write off the Republican or the Democratic Party. Um, they did a lot of things wrong. Um, you know, there were some things they did during the the pandemic, which was not registering people to vote. When the you know as as people were able to get back together. Rather than recover from that effort, they didn't go back in and start re registering people. Um, they also, you know, the National Party, as as um, Manny Diaz has said, National Party sort of abandoned the state and and didn't put a lot of resources in. But I think the most significant thing is that the Democrats did not have a sound have a sound message, and they didn't have something that people really could say, "This is why they supported them." Um, and and so I. I think they have to be working on that. Um, it, I'm sure their message is going to be, as it has been, anti-Trump. Their, their message in the future is, is going to be, we don't want to see more of the same as we've seen with Ron DeSantis. But I think that is, it, that's obviously a message that doesn't work right now. And so uh, they've got to come up with something that is an alternative if they want any success in the next two years. Okay, Mary Ellen Klaas of the Miami Herald, thank you very much for joining us tonight from Tallahassee.